the March 23rd, we're about four months out. So it may be kind of hard to, to sense the excitement early on, but, uh, but just kind of what are your thoughts here as we're waiting for the snow to melt so we can get out and play some golf as uh, we get ready for the 3M Open? Yeah, I, I'm not going to think about snow melt day. Um, although maybe maybe Ian Leonard can give us a little bit of tip on that. It'd be great to get a little bit earlier than I think what everybody's projecting, Jeff. But I mean, we're super excited. Um, the PGA Tour season has gotten off to an incredible start. Obviously, uh, you know, the designated events have brought a lot of awareness to a few of these uh, great tournaments that already had, you know, national and international notoriety and, and these non-designated events have had amazing finishes with awesome stories. And I, I think if you're a PGA Tour fan, which we, of course, are, uh, it, it hasn't been, you couldn't ask for a better script, actually, for the start of 2023. You, you bring up the designated events, and I know that the schedule for next year was announced, I think it was like maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, something along those lines. Um, and I saw that, you know, they have these special events. Uh, it feels like it's sort of maybe a little bit of a reaction to what Liv is doing. They want to, you know, entice the current PGA players to stay on board and not go elsewhere. Um, what was kind of your reaction when you saw that schedule come out as far as those designated events go? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, you know, it certainly was a byproduct of what's happening on, on the Liv Golf Tour. And, and you know, you, you've seen a ton of commentary both ways. Um, listen, the reality is it's, it's, it's been wonderful for the PGA Tour. Um, we have been able to keep our stars um, that are playing the best golf. And, you know, I don't want to eat my words, but I, I don't anticipate, you know, uh, really any more important defections from the PGA Tour. I, I think it's it's really you have to look at it year by year, Jeff. I mean, 2023 and our potential field this year will be different than 2024. Of course, for this year in 2023, you know, we're July 24th to the 30th. We're the second to last tournament before the FedEx Cup playoffs. So it goes the British Open, then us, and then the Wyndham Championship. They've uh, the PJ Tour has reconfigured the FedEx Cup playoffs this year. It used to be the top 125 players in the FedEx Cup standings would make it every year. This year, that's been reduced to the top 70. So, you know, if the playoffs were to start next week and the 3M Open was happening, um, you know, there'd be some really interesting names that would not be in the playoffs, right? Um, you know, Justin Thomas, Hideki Matsuyama, Tommy Fleetwood, Cameron Young, Will Zal Torres, all of those folks would need to play the 3M Open to get into. The FedEx Cup playoffs. Will that stay like that? Don't know. But we we know that just in the names from the top 60 to the 125, those folks that were guaranteed playoffs, you know, the previous years and are not this year, um, there's some great golfers there. And so we just know that our field organically is going to be stronger this year than it has been in past years. And, and by the way, you know, our fields have been great. Um, obviously, we have an incredible defending champion in Tony Fino. And, and so, you know, we're really excited about what the field is going to look like for 2023. But I think different for this year than in previous years, we're not going to know what our field is going to look like until well into advance and leading up to the tournament because of that, you know, variability and in, in how the, the FedEx Cup standings will be fluctuating. Now, when we talk about 2024, uh, it gets a little bit different, as I'm sure you saw. And for the golf fans out there that follow, you know, these designated events will have field sizes between 70 to 80 folks. And that's going to be, you know, constructed a, a number of different ways. The top 50 in the FedEx Cup standings will gain placement. And then there's going to be these pockets, right? And, and I think what you've seen is that, you know, it will uh, have a little bit of variability of it. Um, there'll be the top 10 players that are not eligible. So, you know, again, you have to finish in the top 50 this year to automatically gain standing into that, to those designated events next year. But then when those designated events happen, if you have played well in those non-designated events leading up to those tournaments, the top 10 will get in. And then um, the top five players um, that have earned the most FedEx Cup points uh, until that point will have got in as well. And then, you know, it's how you've played in those pocket of three non-designated events leading up to the designated events. So you'll be able to play your way into that, like folks like Rory and, and Justin Thomas have said. So you're going to get the 50 best from this past year. You're going to get the hottest players uh, in 2024 going into those designated events. And once we know more, you know, where we'll be in the in the schedule, we don't anticipate many changes there, but we do know that there's probably going to be some type of pocket of non-designated events that will be included in. Um, we're going to get those hot players, but then also it doesn't mean that these 
folks that are in the top 50 won't come play the three and open. Um, you know, we've had great success around players that are the top players coming to play our tournament. And, you know, as many people know uh, on tour, uh, we're amongst the best on tour of taking care of the players, their families, their caddies, uh, their support staff. Uh, it's Minnesota in July, right? It's a amazing weather and it's a beautiful place to come play a great golf course. So we think that our field, um, you know, for as great as it's been, will only be enhanced by what uh, has happened here. Will we become a designated event? Don't know. Uh, but if we're not, we feel really strongly about how our field is going to be leading up to it. Piggybacking off that, I'm sure you weren't surprised when you saw that schedule and saw that at least for next year, the 3M is not a designated event. Does that make you sort of change your approach at all or change the tournament's approach at all in terms of the players you try to attract? I mean, obviously you're going to welcome anybody who wants to play, but does it, does it kind of change your strategy at all? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I, I think my initial answer is is no. Uh, I mean, we want to have the best players on the PGA Tour play our tournament. So we will talk to every single one of the top players. Um, when you say top players, though, you know, what, what do you mean by that, right? If you have followed along with the Netflix special Full Swing, you know, uh, some of those popular players on tour might not be a top player when it comes to the FedEx Cup standings, right? You look at a guy like Joel Damon, who I think this week might be like 45th, 46th uh, on the FedEx Cup uh, standings, but his social media has gone through the roof because of just what an incredible human being he is and, you know, self-depreciating, you know, who, which is how I talk about my golf game and maybe the same for you, you know, he is now relatable in so many ways. And so, you know, we're, we will approach every single one of the folks that we have a relationship with, which is everybody to talk about, you know, what the three open is. But I, I would also just say that, you know, the, the, the state of the PGA tour and the state of golf and the talent and golf has never been better. And I've said this before, but if you look at the last four winners of the corn Ferry tour, which for those that don't know is like the minor leagues of the PGA tour, it's been Sung J M, Scotty Scheffler, Will Zalatoris, uh, Cam, Cameron Young and Justin. So, and so those are, you know, nobody really knows about Justin just yet, but they will soon enough. But those other four are in the top 17 of the world golf rankings. Right. And so, you know, while you lose the Dustin Johnsons and the Brooke Kep Brooks Kepkas of the world, these folks are the new Brooks and the new Dustin, and they're going to start to win majors if they haven't already. Scotty obviously has, you know, and so um, these folks will be household names in short order. And just like any sport, you know, I, I come from the world of the NBA, you know, who is the new Kevin Garnett, Kevin Love of the Minnesota Timberwolves? It's the Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, J.D. McDaniels of the world, and we start to love and appreciate those folks. So it's happening the same way in the PGA Tour. And so we will be talking to every single person about coming to the 3M Open. Uh, it's just a matter of, because these folks are independent contractors, how do they pick their schedule? And can we provide an opportunity for them uh, to come straight from wherever the British Open is played to the 3M Open? And that's a question that only they can answer. It's funny you mentioned full swing because I zipped through that show in about two and a half days and, and Joel Damon was maybe my favorite part. I can't say my strategy for qualifying for a u.s open is hammering two white claws at the turn but yes yeah, yeah, I, yeah that that is uh <laughs> that was a bold move uh and it worked for him you know uh right uh, but I, I think we all can relate to that right? Well, right for those of us that have kids or dogs you know we can relate to tony fino bringing his family um on the road with him because he doesn't want to be away from them and we were fortunate to be the first tournament that he's won where his entire family was there and the three open will forever hold a special place in his heart and we for tony and you you, you don't get that raw emotion unless you're being covered by netflix and again it just shows the popularity of where the pga tour is at and you know I, i'm sure as you saw they now have green light at a season two and that that filming will take place during the course of this pga tour season and you know, I mean, you've seen what it's done for Formula One racing, like, you know, respectfully, nobody followed Formula One racing. And now, you know, it's can't miss TV. And you've seen what they've done with their schedule and the new media deals that they're getting. And so we're really excited about what what Full Swing has done for the PGA Tour and specifically for our tournament because of how much people have fallen in love with Tony Fino and his family. I'm glad you mentioned him because I was curious as to what what effect him winning last year might have on your tournament, knowing that, knowing where he came from. I mean, I, I remember watching him on the big break, you know, a decade ago, yeah. um, you know, guys like Colin Morikawa, who years ago when it was, when this tournament was new, were contending and now they're one of the biggest names on tour. What, what do guys like that do for your tournament going forward? 
Well, we love all of our champions, right? I mean, um, but it's it's extra special having Tony win it. You know, he's got um, family here. His his cousin's own um, a restaurant, is, you know, serves as, as chefs there, and so it's really special for Tony and his family to come back here year over year. Uh, of course, we love it when a top fifteen player in the world wins our tournament. It just gives, you know, this I think a little bit sense of extra credibility for our tournament, our golf course has been playing harder year over year. You can see the scores, you know, are falling and right in the median average of, of where all these winning scores are. You know, we're not going to be, you know, PGA national and something very tough as that, but our course has played uh, extremely, um, you know, tough over the last few years. And so uh, just having Tony, the top 15 golfer win our tournament, I think is great. And, you know, and then just moreover, I mean, Tony is such an incredible man. Like he's doing a number of things for us when it comes to how we're promoting the 2023 3M Open. You'll see some of that in our advertising on social media and over, cat, over broadcast. Um, Tony's been great for us and, and he wants to make sure that the fans of Minnesota know that this is an awesome time for them to come out and see this tournament, the golf fans, core golf fans will always be here for the tournament because it's, you know, it's a PGA tour tournament, but the non golf fans and I've called them golf curious fans or top golf fans, you know, we want them to come see, you know, what the three open is all about uh, families, you know, that might think they're too busy to come out one day. Um, heck, if Tony can bring his family from Utah, um, you know, you can bring your family from uh, Shoreview or Wyzetta, right? And so we're just really hopeful that um, a guy like Tony Stature will help elevate our tournament across the board. Seems like every year you and your committee or whoever the group is that you work with to bring players here has dealt with some form of adversity. You had the Olympics the one year. You're always after the British Open, it seems like you had COVID a couple of years ago. Last year, everyone was talking about the Live Tour, and it, it feels like the publicity maybe for that has sort of died off a little bit or leveled off, and, and it just seems like it sort of picks up a little bit with, you know, one name going or whatever they do with their TV coverage or whatever happens week to week. But it, it still seems like you're able to, to convince the, you know, of the top 50 in the world, you're still able to convince a lot of those guys to come to Minnesota. How does that challenge you year to year as you try to prepare a field for this event? It's so interesting that you say that, Jeff. I mean, we just talked about this with one of the charities that we support uh, this morning. Um, I feel like this is our first normal second year, if that makes sense, right? We've never really had a normal second year, COVID, uh, and then uh, Olympics, and then the Live Tour. And and now the Live Tour still is there, but it's it's sort of plateaued, right? It's um, it is, uh, you know, it, it's kind of just doing its thing, and that's and that's great. Um, we now feel like there is a little bit of momentum behind the 3M Open. And yes, part of that is just we feel like we're really um, a destination for the PGA Tour players when it comes to our field. You know, I, I think what do we do? You know, I've, I've talked about this a little bit. You know, we we take care of caddies and and players and family, their families and their support staff better than anybody on tour. And a lot of that has to do with just, you know, our, our surrounding communities and the sports teams, you know, when it comes to, hey, there's a Twins game or a Saints game or, you know, a United game or, you know, there's great art scene here that we partner with some of these folks. We have a ton of things to do for kids and families because of just the lakes and parks. And so, you know, we work with the city of Blaine and Anoka County and around just what can we provide for all of these folks that are descending from the PJ Tour upon the Twin Cities. And again, I mentioned it before, but it's summer in July. I mean, you know, here in Minnesota, like it is a great place. It's not like you know, we're May 1st and you're going to be challenged to do something outside. We have a ton of activities for these folks to do. So, and then, you know, we just, we just, we're biased. We think we put on a really great golf tournament. Um, I've talked about the course. We think the course is fair, but challenging. It's a course that you can make a ton of birdies on if you're playing well. And if you're not, you're going to contribute to one of the 301 balls that went in the water uh, last year, which was the most on tour. And, and, you know, we're going to do some really fun things around hole 18 this year. Um, you know, which again is one of the best finishing holes on tour. And you've seen it last year on Friday and Saturday of the 2022 3M Open when the wind is blowing like it was. Um, boy, it's going to be really fun uh, if you're a spectator to watch, you know, these incredible golfers look more like you and I uh, when you're playing the 18th hole at TPC Twin Cities. And so it's going to be a lot of fun to be out on the 18th hole this year with some of the activities that we have planned. 
we can sort of maybe start to wrap up with with this. What do the phases look like here as you sort of start to get ready for the July tournament? I mean, it's hard to, like we talked about the start. It's hard to think about golf right now. We're four months out unless you're going in going to an indoor simulator. But what does kind of the phases look like as you get closer? I, I know in the past you like to reveal names, maybe one or two at a time or a week at a time. It's pretty early for that yet, but just kind of what is it? What does the ramp up phase look like for, from your perspective? Yeah, right now we're we're knee deep in in selling all of our corporate hospitality and experiences. Right, we've had tremendous support from the Twin Cities business community um, and continue to see that. Um, you know, just transparently because of the rising costs of everything, right? Materials and fuel, it's crazy. Every company is dealing with this across the board. Our revenue goals are even higher, so we have robust goals. Our our build will never be bigger than what it will be this year. You'll see many more corporate hospitality areas. So we're knee deep in that right now, and we continue to lean on the Twin Cities corporate community for that support and, and thank them. Um, right after the Masters is when I think you'll see us start to roll out our ticket packages and our product ladder for how general fans and families and the golf curious and core golf fans can come enjoy the three open, you know, down from our fan passes, which is just a general grounds pass uh, new this year, we're going to introduce uh, a, a party deck on hole 18 fairway, which will be adjacent to the water. So well off of uh, the beaten path, unless you're like some of the golfers in previous years where you've gone way right and try to take a, a little bit of an interesting angle into 18, uh, which will, you know, be really interesting if you got to play your second shot off of the, the, the party deck there on 18 Ferry, but we're going to have music and games and celebrities over there um, to really attract that 21 to 35 year old crowd uh, and different products within our ticket product ladder that you can come enjoy the three open. And then yeah, we'll start announcing some of our commitments probably more, you know, in that May, June timeframe, which is always helps, um, you know, spike ticket sales. Our goal is to, you know, introduce one or two every week or every two weeks so that we can start to build that drumbeat of, hey, here's coming to the three open. And then this year, you know, we're going to really uh, talk about uh, the charities that we support. Our our mission statement this year, or sort of our motto is, is you'll see, will be see great, do great, see great golfers, see great golf activations, but then do great, right? Um, give back to the community, grow the game of golf, improve lives. And so we're really going to be highlighting a few of the charities that we've supported throughout the number uh, of years, but in a, in a bigger way here and just how we continue to give back. I think you know this, but most folks might not. Um, every PGA Tour tournament is a nonprofit. And so, you know, we particularly give back uh, between one, $1.5 million each year to uh, around 30 or so deserving Twin Cities charities, and, and this year will be no different. And we want to highlight that and lean into that more this year so that folks can see that when you buy a ticket to the three Mope and a portion of that actually goes directly to these charities. And I think we need to do a better job of just highlighting that. Getting sure and get Adam Dillon back for the pro or for the prime and the Compass Challenge? You know, we'll see. Uh, our Compass Challenge might look a little bit different this year. I think we're going to try to do something different on Wednesday night. Uh, maybe not do a three-hole challenge, but something more into hole 18. As I talked about, we're really trying to highlight hole 18 more sure. this year. Um, Pro-Am, yeah, we're trying to get Adam, you know, back. Because we're a week later this year, Jeff, we might lose a little bit of our football players because training camp will have already started. Sure. Uh, so I think, you know, fortunately for the Thielans, Unfortunately for the Minnesota community, he's probably already going to be in Carolina at that time. But, you know, we're going to um, lean on our other athletes, hopefully on the Wolves. Um, I've, I've heard that Mike Conley, Mike, if you're watching, I heard you're a big golfer. Uh, and so, you know, we want to have you here. The wild folks are big golfers. Um, you know, I think the twins and United are both in town that week, so they'll probably be busy. Um, but yeah, we want to get as many folks as we can involved with the three Mopen to, again, just highlight, spread the word, and we'll have some fun things planned, man.